Israeli leaders are taking steps to stabilize their government tonight after the brutal terrorist attack from Hamas. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has officially formed a unity government with the former defense minister of Israel to see the nation through its war against Hamas. Janine Zakaria is with us tonight. She's the Washington Post former Jerusalem bureau chief and has reported on Israel for 20 years. Janine, this is a very rare move. What does it mean for Israel in its fight against Hamas? Well, in the initial hours after the attack even began, there were people in Israel who were calling for a national unity government. Um, there were others who were calling for, and still are continuing for, actually, Prime Minister Netanyahu to resign because of this unprecedented um, failure here in terms of protecting the country. But at the end of the day, they were able to get together, and he was able to unite with Benny Gantz, who's been his most formidable political foe, especially since January, when you've had weekly protests against Netanyahu um, for, you know, internal internal strife over the efforts to upend the judicial system, the judiciary there, Supreme Week in the Supreme Court. So he came together and he brought in Benny Gantz. He brought in uh, another former IDF chief of staff, uh, Gadi Eisenkot. And Yoav Gallant, his partner from Likud, is a former commander of um, Southern Command, which controls the area, was in charge of the area that was the primary uh, area that was attacked. And he has demoted, essentially, the most um, controversial, most right-wing members of his cabinet, in a way, Itamar Ben-Gavir, another person named Betzal el Smotrich, And they are not part of what's called this new war cabinet that has been formed to determine the next steps in Gaza. You know, I, I know Israelis are not a monolith with one voice and one opinion, but here we are five, now Israel time, almost six days in. What are Israelis saying about Netanyahu tonight? There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of anger right now. I mean, already going into this, you had half the country on a weekly basis protesting against him, hundreds of thousands of Israelis going out. And now you've had the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. And as the previous guest was saying, hours if, and days without rescue as people were hiding um, from Hamas terrorists. So there's a lot of confusion and, and frustration. Just today, earlier today, there was, you know, you haven't seen a lot of government ministers out and about. And one member of Prime Minister Netanyahu's cabinet from the Likud party, she tried to go to a hospital and they were screaming at her to get out of there that you've ruined the country. So there's a lot of anger that you normally don't see against the government at this time. But frankly, Stephanie, right now at this moment, I would say most Israelis are worried about the soldiers. This mass call up where people from the Bay Area, where I am, all the way to Denver, to New York, to everywhere, they are going back to Israel right now to fight. And Israelis are, I mean, literally, they don't know what to do. Like they're, they're cooking food and bringing it to the army bases to the point where like, the army bases are saying, we don't need any more schnitzel. We don't need any more chicken right now. Like, they just want to help right now, and they're scared. You know, the, in the in the announcement of the national unity government today, they were very old. There was a lot of tough words about killing all the members, the Hamas members and stuff, but it was, it was very oblique, the messaging. And this was is in contrast to, say, 2014, the last major flare-up, was that Israel was a little more definitive about the mission in terms of, we're going to get rid of the tunnels. We're going to do this and that. And so I think partially they're being oblique so that people just don't know. They want there to be some confusion. But also, I don't know if they really worked out the plan. Do people believe Netanyahu underestimated the power and force of Hamas? That he said, oh, forget them. They're, they're, they're unorganized. They're not going to pose any threat. And meanwhile, it's been an extraordinary show of devastating force that Israel certainly wasn't prepared for. Yes. The answer is yes. Not only Netanyahu, we don't know the extent within the, the Shin Bet, the National Security Service, the Shin Bet is the security serv arm of the security wing that sort of is responsible for this kind of uh, Gaza and for Hamas. You know, they're saying in Hebrew, some of the officials, Zilzanu Bahem, like we, we kind of underestimated. We made it like, oh, they're going to, you know, just keep them there. Or they're, they're saying we thought, they're saying in Hebrew, we thought we had the tiger in the cage. And they just, you know, Netanyahu has been always focused on the threat from Iran, the nuclear threat from Hezbollah. There's been a lot of concern about the West Bank, and they they really they they shifted their focus, but it still doesn't explain it. It doesn't explain it. This is apparently supposed to be the most high tech intelligence service in the world. They put Pegasus software on people's phones that you can't detect, 
And so the fact that they were able to pull this off like this is still just so perplexing and people are talking about it and talking about it. The most senior former security official. So when this is all over, there will be, and God knows when that will be, this is, there's going to be, uh, I don't even know. I don't think that Prime Minister Netanyahu will be, for one, will be able to continue to rule as the leader. And God knows the tiger was certainly not in the cage. Janine, thank you so much for your insights. I appreciate you joining us.